Businesses are seeking trusted sources of information to deal with the numerous challenges surrounding the rapidly evolving COVID-19 situation. The Greater Vancouver Board of Trade is bringing together a number of experts to discuss how to navigate these challenges for our members and also for the general public. I'm Bridget Anderson, the CEO of the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade, and I'm joined by Tamara Vrooman, the CEO of Van City, Canada's largest community credit union. Tamara, very clearly, these are unprecedented times. What advice do you have for leaders in addressing these challenges? I think they, what you said there, Bridget, is absolutely true. These are uh, unprecedented times. And, and what we're seeing is, is certainly that, that people uh, go from wanting to, of course, not instill panic and be responsible, uh, but at the same time, uh, wanting to respond to the needs of their employees and their customers and their business partners. So I, I think really now is the time to make sure that we're taking all of the preventive measures we can. If we look back and we say we, uh, we took more than we needed to, uh, that will be a good news story uh, versus uh, one where we failed to take this, the measured steps that we could and uh, really take care of the health and well-being of our staff, of our customers and our partners. I think it's also important to remember that what we're doing here is really um, a bit of public service in helping our healthcare system be there for the people who most need it um, in this unprecedented time. And so what are you telling your staff, yeah. your members? I mean, it's a, a large organization and when you include the members of your credit union, that's even a bigger group. Yeah, what we're telling our, our members is, is of course that we know from the science and from the public health authorities that the overall risk uh, to British Columbians remains low. However, the health and well-being of our staff uh, is our first priority. And so we're asking members wherever possible, if they don't need to come into a branch and get uh, service in person, we have lots of other ways that we're really help, uh, hoping that we can serve them through online. Uh, we're allowing our staff uh, to work from home and we've got uh, measures in place uh, to do that. And we're of course keeping close contact uh, with our staff. If anybody has been in contact or is feeling unwell, we're encouraging them to stay home and self-isolate. We have a very, we're lucky, we have a very generous uh, sick benefits program, and we're able to make sure that our, our staff uh, get the care they need. And how are you managing as a leader um, these, as I mentioned, unprecedented times? And I don't think anybody was prepared for, for where the situation is now or where it might evolve to. So as a leader, how do you handle this? Yeah, it's very, it is a very challenging time. And it, it, you know, information is changing almost by the day, maybe between the time we're having this conversation and when, when this video is actually aired, it will be different uh, yet again. So what I'm doing is now is not the time to be making decisions in a vacuum. Uh, we're using our network to learn what other people are doing. We're sharing our plans uh, with others and seeking input uh, from other business leaders. Uh, I'm remaining calm, but being connected to our members and our staff, answering their questions, reassuring them, but not pretending I have categorical answers because we don't. And I think we are in a pretty unique time. And so just, just really staying connected, being reassuring, pointing to the science. I think there's a lot of scary information mm -hmm. uh, out there in social media. And so really pointing back to credible sources, always basing our decisions on those same sources and reinforcing them is a way to make sure people have the information they need when they need it, for sure, but that they're getting the right information to make decisions for themselves, for their families, and of course, for our business. Man City deeply connected to the community. When you pivot a bit and look at the businesses, a lot of small and medium enterprises in Greater Vancouver, what are those members telling you about their concerns? We're definitely uh, having outreach to our small business and medium sized business members, you know, many of whom don't have large HR departments. And so we're sharing any learnings we can about travel advisories, HR policies, self-isolation, that sort of thing. We're also asking uh, for, are they experiencing any uh, liquidity issues, any disruptions to their supply chain? Can we work with them to structure their financing over a longer period of time so they can maintain their cash flow, keep their employees working while we get through this uh, unusual time? So financial institutions, credit unions and banks have a big role to play here in helping stabilize uh, the economy and 
we're very keen to stay connected to our members. And what kind of advice can you give to those uh, small and medium enterprises that don't have those kinds of resources as they're looking at the economic impacts that are still evolving and unfolding? But is there advice that you can give them um, about how they might be able to navigate and, and get through this? Well, we've certainly we've certainly been encouraging them for, for some time to try and uh, find ways that they can encourage their employees to self-isolate while still doing business. That's not always practical for some in the construction trades, uh, in the face-to-face -face, uh, service industry, hospitality industry. So we are also making sure that they have access to uh, other sources of labor, partnering between different organizations. Can you, we're able to have a 50% rotation where half of our staff are working at some point and half of our staff aren't. Can we find ways that uh, small businesses in the same sector can share stuff uh, across to make sure that there's business continuity, there's, there's separation, which we're told is what we should try and encourage mm -hmm. for the next little while, but also that they retain their employees. Because, you know, before we came into this period, one of the number one issues uh, in our region was the scarcity of labor and being able to hire people. So I know business owners are really keen to keep the employees that they have. Uh, while at the same time, of course, making the economics of their business work. And it's good to see that uh, levels of government are taking mitigation measures to help. And I think those will continue to evolve and change. But looking at the economic impact for our region, I mean, that's obviously got to be a concern uh, for you as the head of a credit union mm -hmm. and, and having so many members who are small and medium enterprises. It, it absolutely is. And it's something that we're monitoring. Of course, the longer this goes, the more likely that it will have a long term uh, disruption. So we're certainly not only planning for the short term with our members, but thinking about uh, the longer term and what they might need over the longer term, both for ourselves, for our staff but also for our members. And you are sharing resources uh, with your members as well, as much as you can. Absolutely. We've taken a sort of open source approach. As I said, when it comes to leadership, uh, I think now is the time to do that, but also our learning. So how can we share our thinking? Uh, we're posting our uh, COVID response plans on vancity.com. We'll be sharing them with the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade. We're happy to share our learnings and also welcome uh, the learnings of others. Uh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. How do we make sure that we really have an opportunity to see what's working other places and just adapt it for our own purposes? Thank you very much, Tamara. Yeah, thanks very much, Bridget.